hello friends welcome to my channel so in this today's small video of snowflake master class we will see the top 5 interview questions which are usually asked uh, about query processing layer so before going to the interview questions we will learn in brief about the snowflake query processing layer and after that we will go to the interview questions let's start so what is snowflake query processing layer if you remember in our previous video we learned about snowflake storage layer where we ended up storing all the data into the snowflake tables now to perform any kind of read or write operations into these uh, snowflake tables we need compute resources now these compute resources are provided by snowflake query processing layer these compute resources in snowflake are called virtual warehouses now the question is what do we get whenever we create a virtual warehouse we get three resources within each cluster of a virtual warehouse one is compute nodes so a set of compute nodes which are performed uh, which are used to perform computation tasks then a temporary storage which is used to store the temporary data and then cache memory which is used to store the results which can be used later on now what are the different types of compute resources in snowflake so there are primarily two types of compute resources one is user created so you can create your own virtual warehouse that you can use for different tasks this is called a virtual warehouse in terminology uh, within snowflake another one is snowflake provision so there are certain features within snowflake for which you do not need to create a uh, virtual warehouse and assign it for example uh, using snowpipe uh, automatic clustering uh, materialized view maintenance so though they need a compute resources to execute but you do not pr uh, provide uh, those compute resources those compute resources are provisioned by snowflake account so such of the features are called taskless features and all of those compute uh, resources are provided by snowflake now user created virtual warehouses there can be two types of user created virtual warehouses standard and multi cluster we will see the difference between them shortly now one very important thing to remember is though the compute resources is uh, user created or snowflake provision snowflake account is charged for both and you do not have any control on the size of snowflake provision virtual warehouses another point to remember is that for ddl operations we do not need any active virtual warehouse it is taken care by snowflake provisioned uh, compute nodes because it only operates on metadata layer snowflake uses underlying cloud service provider to create virtual warehouse so snowflake account can be created on uh, one of the three cloud providers uh, it can be amazon it can be azure or it can be gcp so whenever we create a virtual warehouse uh, snowflake underneath uses the compute services of that cloud service provider to create a virtual warehouse but at the top layer user does not feel any difference irrespective of the cloud provider because uh, snowflake is a cloud agnostic service you can create any number of virtual warehouses within your snowflake account there is no limit uh, virtual warehouse do not share the resources with each other so this is important to remember the resources which are created within each virtual warehouse cluster it does not share these resources with any existing virtual warehouse or future virtual warehouse this is the answer to question that why uh, whenever a virtual warehouse is created it does not impact the performance of existing virtual warehouse because it does not share the resources another important point to remember is the size of virtual warehouse can be changed even if it is executing a query so we do not need to bring down a virtual warehouse to change its size snowflake in snowflake you can create virtual warehouse in eight t-shirt sizes we will see uh, 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 shortly but to increase or decrease the size of a virtual warehouse you do not need to bring down that virtual warehouse and then uh, change the size and then uh, resume it again you can do it when it is in active state also when it is executing an query but the important point to remember is that the currently executing query is not impacted by the change in size only the next query and thereafter all the queries will be impacted by change in the size of the virtual warehouse so this is how a virtual warehouse uh, looks like so suppose you are creating a virtual warehouse of size small so you can create virtual warehouse size uh, in eight sizes from extra small up to 4xl uh, in the extra small uh, you get one uh, cluster so one question which can arise here is why do we call it a cluster we call it a cluster because we get multiple compute nodes within each virtual warehouse cluster uh, to be specific 
specific, we get eight compute nodes, and all of these compute nodes can work in parallel. And whenever we increase the size of a virtual warehouse, each next size will double the number of clusters within the virtual warehouse. For example, extra small will have one cluster count, small will have two, medium will have four. Each cluster consumes one credit uh, per hour. So extra small virtual warehouse, because it has one cluster, it will consume one credit per hour. Small, it will have two clusters, so it will consume two cl uh, credits per hour. And similar way, four Excel size virtual warehouse will have 128 clusters, so it will consume 128 credits per hour. Now let us go to the questions. So the first question which is usually asked is, explain the Snowflake query processing layer and virtual warehouse cluster, which we just did at the very high level. The second question is, does Snowflake need a user created virtual warehouse for all the operations? The answer is no. As I explained, there are certain features which are called serverless features for which we do not create a virtual warehouse and assign them. They use Snowflake provisioned virtual warehouses. So for those features, we do not need a user created virtual warehouse. Second, a third important question is, what is horizontal and vertical scaling? How they are different and what are their use cases? This interview questions, this interview question will be asked in all of the Snowflake interviews. So let us understand this in detail. So suppose there is one SQL query, which is we are saying one unit of workload and it needs one cluster or extra small virtual warehouse to complete this workload in five minutes. Now, whenever this the workload on the uh, Snowflake environment increases, the goal is that we want to complete the task in the same amount of time using uh, different kind of scaling. So let us see that now. Let us say that our workload gets doubled to two unit of workload. Now earlier to complete one unit of workload, it was taking one uh, five minutes. So we will try to keep the execution duration to be five minutes only, even with the increased workload. So if our workload gets increased to two units, there are two ways it can increase. E either we can receive a single query which is equivalent to two unit of workload, or we can get two uh, queries, which is equivalent to uh, one unit of workload each. Now, if we get a single query of twice the size of the uh, workload, now to give you an example, suppose there is an SQL query, which is processing 100 million records, but due to increased data, now it is executing 200 million of records underneath, right? So the single query has increased workload. What we can do to complete it in five minutes is, we can increase the size of the virtual warehouse too small which will have now two clusters and it can complete the two unit of workload within approximately within five minutes only now on increasing the workload if we are increasing the size of the virtual warehouse we call it vertical scaling suppose in the second scenario we receive two workloads one unit each if we increase the size of the virtual warehouse because it can execute only one query at a time it will take one query first and start executing it and second query will be added to the queue now we do not want to that situation where one query is waiting for the resources to be available right so what is the alternate option instead of increasing the virtual warehouse size we create another instance of extra small virtual warehouse now we have two queries of one unit workload each and we have two virtual warehouse one cluster each both can be taken care by uh, the virtual warehouses and they can also execute in parallel and eventually we will end up completing the workload in five minutes only so when on increasing the workload if we are increasing the number of virtual warehouses we call it horizontal scaling so this is the explanation now let us see the advantages and disadvantages or differences between them so vertical scaling it is high performance definitely because uh, double the workload we are still able to complete it in uh, within five minutes only but the drawback is that it cannot be automated so you cannot automatically configure the virtual warehouse to increase or decrease its size depending on the workload it is operating chances of under usage so suppose after the completion of this bigger query we again start getting smaller query which is equivalent to one unit of workload but because we cannot decrease the size of the virtual warehouse automatically what we will doing and uh, what we will we will end up doing we will be using small size of virtual warehouse to execute one unit of sql query workload so it will be an under usage of the capacity of our virtual warehouse 
chances of credit wasted because we are under using our capacity of virtual warehouse and virtual warehouse charges are applied based on how much time it has been up and running rather than depending on how much workload it was operating on so we will be ending up cre uh, on credit wasted another disadvantage is that even though we had a higher uh, number of cluster count if we get multiple queries of smaller uh, size of one unit workload it will end up adding to the them to the queues so even with the higher capacity we will have to add queries into the queue now let us see the disadvantages and advantages of horizontal scaling first of all it can be automated with multi cluster virtual warehouses so whenever our workload increases in terms of number of queries a new virtual warehouse instance can be uh, woke up uh, by our snowflake account depending on the configuration and whenever our workload decreases it can be further sent to sleep or suspended depending on the workload high performance and no queues so because whenever our, our workload is increasing we are automatically increasing the number of instances so we are still uh, com uh, completing the increased workload in the specified amount of time so it is high performance second is no queues because uh, they, uh, we have uh, multiple number of virtual warehouses so there are uh, no chances of adding queries into the queue uh, exception is that we can only create up to 10 instances of a virtual warehouse so if uh, the query count goes beyond 10 it will end up get, getting added to the queues of any of the virtual warehouse no chances of under usage because we are automatically uh, suspending and resuming the virtual warehouse depending on the workload so there are no chances of under usage no chances of credit wastage also the only thing is chances of under performance when single heavy workload appears so suppose we get a single query of two workload in this scenario two unit of workload so uh, we can because we cannot increase the size of virtual warehouse and no two virtual warehouse can operate on a single query in parallel so it will end up extra small virtual warehouse that is equivalent to one cluster working on a two unit of uh, workload SQL query so the time will be increased to 10 minutes approximately now uh, this comes to the next section what are the use cases where we should use vertical scaling versus horizontal scaling so whenever our workload is increasing within a single query for example as i said earlier it was performing uh, or processing 100 million of records now it is processing 200 or 300 million uh, records so in those cases we should increase the size of the virtual warehouse so, uh, the use case for horizontal scaling is whenever our workload is increasing in terms of number of queries right and we want to operate those additional sql queries in parallel that's when we should go for horizontal scaling hope you all have understood it the next question is what is the difference between standard and virtual, uh, virtual warehouse and multi cluster virtual warehouse so both standard and multi cluster virtual warehouse support all the eight sizes of virtual warehouse from extra small to 4xl the only difference is that st standard virtual warehouse does not support automatic horizontal scaling and multi cluster virtual warehouse supports automatic horizontal scaling another important question is how to find the right size of virtual warehouse for a task so snowflake does not provide any written uh, formula to identify the right size for a particular type uh, task uh, it recommends doing experimentations with increased or decreased size of virtual warehouse to reach uh, the uh, right size of the uh, virtual warehouse for a specific task but if we are working on data warehousing projects we know what are the different layers and based on the knowledge of those layers what kind of data it is going to operate on and what kind of operations it is going to perform uh, we can start with a baseline and after that we can do certain experimentations with increased and decreased size and reach to the right size so let us see that so if we divide our data warehousing projects in two layers there will be primarily three layers data loading layer batch processing layer and user ad hoc layer uh, queries so data loading layer is the layer where we are receiving the data into the files from upstream systems and we are loading that uh, data from the files into the snowflake environment now very important point to remember is though our snowflake cluster single cluster has eight compute nodes no two compute nodes can operate on a single file in parallel only one compute node can take care of one file so suppose we are receiving uh, one file of 1 gb size 
and we are having one cluster extra small size of virtual warehouse only one compute node will be working on that file and seven compute nodes will be sitting in idle now to get the optimum performance we need to uh, we should try to use all of the compute nodes because we are being charged for all, all of the compute nodes irrespective of whether they are being used or not so suppose we are getting uh, one gb file so instead of loading that one gb file we what we can do is we can split that file into multiple files of smaller size let's say 200 mb each so we will end up creating five uh, small files out of 1 gb and then we can use the same virtual warehouse to load those five five files in parallel rather than only one file so now our five compute nodes will be at work and at least three uh, and only three compute nodes will be sitting idle uh, so what should be the strategy to find out the size we should uh, we should find to uh, we should try to identify how many number of files our virtual warehouse is going to operate on in parallel so in the multiples of 8 so let us say up to 8 number of uh, files we should keep our virtual warehouse size to extra small and if it is going to operate on let's say uh, 10 to 16 number of files in parallel then we should increase the size of virtual warehouse to small and so on in the multiplication of 8 the reason is we want to use all the compute nodes second one is batch processing so in the batch processing what happens usually there are multiple queries which are operating on kind of predefined uh, number of uh, volume of data so in case of incremental we know uh, what amount of data usually we, we get with like 10 percent variation right so uh, we already know the volume of data we already know how many queries are going to execute in parallel because transformations are defined there are no ad hoc queries which are executed for transformation so because we know both of them the first approach should be that we start with smaller size of virtual warehouse depending on the number of queries being executed into parallel or depending on the number of queries getting added to the queue we should go for multi clustering first and even after multi clustering we have multiple queries which are taking longer time then we should increase those uh, the size of the virtual warehouse another strategy which is usually taken is that the high load queries which are single queries but of higher workload they are separated out on a uh, increased size virtual warehouse the low workload queries and which are coming uh, a lot of queries in parallel they are separated out on multi cluster virtual warehouses user ad hoc queries so this is the part where uh, user fires an uh, an ad hoc query for the analysis uh, purpose on the reporting data now the uh, internal uh, the feature about it is that we do not know how how much amount of data it is going to operate on uh, this uh, depends on what query user fires so we do not know the volume of the data definitely so what should we should what strategy we should uh, uh, take is that we should start with a little bigger size of virtual warehouse and depending on the queries getting added into the queue because that depends on the uh, number of users uh, accessing your system uh, we should go for multi clustering so these are the important interview questions uh, for snowflake interview and i hope this will help you if you find this video helpful please like this video and subscribe to my channel for new videos thank you